Jeremy Cook here, and today I'll be going over the second part of my workbench lighting setup. It uses three PIR sensors to determine where you're working and light that section up. These are controlled by an Arduino Nano, which attaches to a Groundduino Nano board, which was provided by the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. PCBWay did good, good work on this board and got it to me in a reasonable amount of time. So if you're looking for a PCB manufacturer, PCBWay could be a very good option. Right here, what I'm doing, I'm hooking up some buttons to substitute in for the PIR sensors during testing. Wrap those up, solder them, and then use some heat shrink just for, for good measure. With those hooked up, I could press the buttons and cause a reaction in the left, middle, or right sections of the LEDs. This made it really easy during testing. I didn't have to deal with the PIR sensors directly. Here it's running a strand test. Didn't use these colors all in it, but I guess I could when I get ready to. Press the one button, the one side lights up, and then press another one, the lights up, and the third button lights the middle. To actually mount these lights, I used a section of one inch plastic tubing, cut that out on my miter saw, and then drilled some holes on my milling machine. Line that up, just made sure I had everything correct there. Snap it in two so you have one side to go on one side, one side on the other, and in between there'll be some holes and some wires to connect everything. I put a hole in the middle here as, as well as one hole on each side, but in the end I would actually need three holes in the middle. With that done, it was time to fish the wires through. And the next two minutes of the fi this video will actually be quite a bit of fishing, so if you don't like that, feel free to fast forward to around four minutes. Nonetheless, I thought it was, was kind of cool trying to stuff all this wire into, into this one inch tubing. Snap that PIR sensor in nicely and then use this fish stick, which is generally used in, in like walls and stuff, but worked pretty well here. So at this point I realized I hadn't cut any holes for the the actual um, LEDs to go through. So like I'm planning to cut a hole through there, put the wire for the, from the LEDs from here to here. Hadn't done that, so I had to fish all these wires out. I did leave a little white wire that I can, can kind of pull on that with. So hopefully it won't be so hard the second time, but you know, kind of a pain anyways. So with those holes, two holes drilled, I started deburring them with these, this cheap, cheap tool that I got several years ago. It's been really, really handy. So I'd recommend one of those if you can find it. Little blow off with my Harbor Freight compressor, which has also been extremely ha handy. And after that, it was time for pulling some more wires through. Nice and colorful. So, you know, I thought it was a nice shot, even though it's <laughs> quite a bit of wiring detangling here. I imagine if I had long hair, perhaps I'd be a little bit better at this, but I don't. So it takes me quite a while to get everything loose. Look at that. Looking good. And the PIR sensor snap right in. Now, if you're wondering here, I had to fish some more wires in from one, one hole to another and pulled it out with this little dental tool that I got off eBay. It was extremely cheap. I, I gotta say, I'm hoping my, uh, my dentist uses something a little bit more expensive, but if not, hopefully at least passes the savings on to us. So looking good, cut that off with some heavy duty scissors, again from Harbor Freight. And now it's time for a little bit of, a little bit of soldering action. I won't say my soldering technique is perfect, Feel free to criticize in the comments, but it did get it done. Below that, you've got a piece of, of plastic that I cut off from a, a label, a zip tie label. You'll see what I use that for in just a second. So on top of that, I put some heat shrink, shrunk this down and that made a nice stress relief. Makes up for maybe my questionable soldering technique. So from there, I could stretch out the WS2812 LEDs and attach it all down. I should note here that my five volt WS2812 lines are running off a of separate power supply as the 12 volts that I'm using for the static white lights. Probably not the best way to do it, but it did work on this and it's kind of evolved over time. So not too bad. Unlike other projects where I use my, my bench to work on it, I'm actually working on my bench. So I gotta get 
get under here and, you know, do some stuff. So hopefully I can film that okay and you can check it out. Seems like no matter what, you always want a bigger and bigger workspace. Yeah, that wiring looks, could be a little better, so maybe I'll clean that up. All right, just a little cleaner now. We'll keep on cleaning it up and, you know, maybe make it halfway presentable by the end of this. That's a bit better. Maybe not good enough to turn in if I was getting paid for it. Well, I guess I am getting paid for it, but it's staying here at the house, so not too bad. And look at that. Looking good. Oh, turn that on. Why not? Alright, so after reprogramming it and seeing it into something useful, let's go ahead and see how it works. So we got here just on the, you know, kind of on the default, not that light area. So if we pass by, right here, moving through, and when it hits the PIR sensor, it should light up. So not too lit up now. Let's see, hit the PIR sensor. Yep, that part goes on. Looking good. And let's see, as I walk across, it should automatically come on. So that second part and the third part, looking good, nice and bright. So there's these buttons right here like before. So turn that down a little bit, turn it off, down, up, 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 and full brightness, looking good. So yeah, we'll turn that off and so right now we'll just turn it up a little bit more. Yeah. And when nobody's in front of it, these RGB LEDs just go off. And you know, I could program that for red or blue or to do some sort of trick when it comes on or whatever, but for now I haven't. So, you know, I'll put the code I'll put the code up if you want to examine it yourself. But anyway, thanks for watching. It's been a neat project, something I've had in mind for quite a while. So hopefully this will help me get a little bit more light on my projects and you know, of course, of course, if that's not enough light, I can turn on the overhead lights or, oh, or that. But, you know, kind of nice to have a little bit of, a little bit of backlighting coming in. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. And as long as you're still watching, I, you know, I'll, I'll just note that I, I do know there are a little bit better ways to do this than to have two separate power supplies for the 5 volt and the, the 5 volt and the 12 volt, but yeah, that's what I did. This project's kind of evolved over time, so you know, maybe I'll fix it up, maybe not. I guess we'll just have to see. Thanks for watching.